Capricorn, welcome to your April 2019 Astro Update. I'm Raina. So April is a month that I think is going to see you with a lot of domestic activity. The sun is in Aries, that's your fourth house of home and family. And uh, the fourth house is real estate as well. And it's also your mother and your childhood even can be the fourth house. So when there's an emphasis on this house, you may be doing something, maybe even going back to your hometown and kind of looking at the old property or if you're uh, family still lives there, your family of origin, going back there and kind of going, taking a stroll down memory lane. But it could be that you are buying a new home. Maybe you're going to start building a home because we do have uh, a new moon in Aries on April 5th. So that could be some kind of a new development in home matters. And of course, that it can include building a home or closing on a home, you know, buying a new home, or I guess even selling your home could be uh, a new development. And and also something related to your mother that is different. Maybe you have had a certain, how would I say it, a certain kind of um, revelation about the relationship between you and her. And it's like you're starting on a new f- foot. Is that right? On a new foot? <laughs> that doesn't sound like correct. Um, on the 10th, we have a Jupiter retrograde in Sagittarius in the 12th house. Wow. Well, that's kind of an interesting place to have a, a Jupiter retrograde or any kind of uh, placement like that to even have Jupiter in that house is very interesting because Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius, but it's the ancient ruler of Pisces, which is the the sign that rules uh, the 12th. So Piscean matters and that, you know, that's one thing you can see between uh, Sag and uh, Pisces is that there's that spiritual connection. And with uh, the 12th house, it's, a, it's about mysticism as far as I'm concerned. And, um, you know, past lives, so karma. And karma, when I say past lives and karma, what I'm talking about is how, you know, we are influenced in this life lifetime by things that have happened before. I, I don't know if I mentioned this to you when I was talking about Jupiter and all the different signs, but in, in uh, Capricorn, because Jupiter is in your 12th house, um, there could be like some kind of gain, even financial gain that's coming from good karma from a past life. And I'm just thinking now, I'm wondering if the Jupiter retrograde is an even better period for past life stuff to come up because, you know, it's going backwards. And, and, uh, sometimes Jupiter, it's said that if Jupiter retrogrades, that it can give you those opportunities to, to, to benefit from something that you missed the first time around. So, I mean, I'm thinking, Hey, is this from another lifetime or what? In addition to this, even in this lifetime, you may have had some kind of desire to maybe do a a yoga teacher training program or a, um, especially with a, like a Reiki or shamanic healing program that you wanted to get involved with. And you may have this, maybe you couldn't do it at the time when you were supposed to, or when it was offered and now you're able to finally do it. Um, but in this year of Jupiter in your 12th house, Capricorn, you should be able to, to make some gains as it applies to your uh, spiritual life and maybe even parlaying it into a career where you can um, make a living off of it. And it's not like I'm saying, oh, you can make all this money off of it, but that you can support yourself doing something that you really love. That's what I really mean. And I also feel that anytime that we have these, um, like having Jupiter in the 12th house, It can be um, something maybe even to do with soulmates and, you know, twin flames or or along those lines, because we're talking again about past lives 
And with Jupiter, we're also talking about luck. And I, I had to do this video over again. And I was saying the first time around that I don't really believe in luck anymore. I don't really even like that word because to me, it almost implies something random. And I honestly feel that alignment is a word that I would describe with Jupiter more than anything else. Uh, Jupiter is connected to the Wheel of Fortune card in the, um, and the major kind of the Tarot. And to me, it's the same thing. It's like the wheel that's constantly turning. And sometimes we feel like everything is lining up the way we want it. And we would call that alignment. And sometimes we feel out of uh, that alignment and out of sorts, out of alignment. And to me, it's not about luck. It's about how are we, what are we thinking? What are we saying? All these things that are coming from us that may be affecting um, the greater, uh, you know, our, our may affecting us may be affecting us in a greater sense. So that to me, I think a Capricorn can appreciate this because I am saying something that you're doing, uh, you know, on your part to make something happen rather than just sitting back and saying, wow, I've had so much terrible luck. Or, wow, I've had such great luck, but it's almost like you're kind of witnessing it from the outside looking in. And I and I really feel that we we must take inspired action in life in order to make things happen, that they don't, that things just don't happen like that. Um, but that Jupiter can be like that cheerleader and that boost that if we're doing, like if, if we take that one step that the universe will take nine for us on the 17th mercury goes into aries so mercury joins the sun in that in that fourth house of home and family mercury can be contracts so this could be something that i was saying if you're if you're um buying a new house or something like that now this is when mercury finally goes out of its shadow um it retrograded at 29 pisces so it's finally going out of its shadow, and that can mean that it is going to be, um, you know, full speed ahead and in the area of trying to maybe get something nailed down that has to do with uh, a um, real estate contract. This could be talking to your mother. Um, maybe she made an some kind of an effort or you ran into her. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about, let's say you were estranged from her and you ran into her somewhere and then she made a phone call. And now, you know, that everything is getting back to normal. Um, or just having more conversations with her, but it could be, like I said, something to do with speaking about real estate matters and um, maybe researching what you need to do about a particular issue. On the 19th, we have that second of two full moons in Libra, this at 29 Libra. And this is in your 10th house of career. So we've had two full moons, Capricorn, in the house that you ruled, the 10th house of career. And your reputation. So this could be like a time when you finally see your ship come in when it comes to uh, getting that, that those kudos that you deserve or getting that promotion. Uh, the first one, the first full moon that was at zero degrees on the day that I'm actually recording this, which is, uh, March 20th, um, that one, maybe you had some kind of, um, uh, revelation about your career in general, about what direction you're going into, Maybe you realize that you were kind of like playing small and you, that you should go after promotion. Maybe you're being a little bit, um, I was going to say conservative, um, but just not thinking that you had what it took to be able to get a promotion. Um, it can be, I mean, it could be something of ending a, a particular career. Although when I, I would think it would be more, at this full moon, because the other one was at zero degrees. To me, that's almost like a new moon, to be honest with you. 
so some of you may be retiring uh, at 29 Libra. This could be the, the culmination of your efforts uh, over a matter of years. And, uh, and retiring is great too. I mean, it's not like, oh, wow, it's bad to retire. It all depends on what stage of life you're in, but this could be a promotion or recognition. And um, on the 20th, we have the sun going into Taurus, which is a friendly angle to you, a trine, because it's an earth sign. So this is going to be the fifth house of romance, the sun going there. So we're going to have some uh, inner planets going in there, uh, looks like in May, but that can make you feel a sense of rom romantic uh, ideas and creativity. And uh, if you're single, this is a good time to find somebody, actually. Venus, on the same day, goes into the fourth house. So it almost makes me wonder if you are selling a home and you're receiving the profits from the home. Venus can be money that you're receiving from real estate, or maybe you're receiving money from your mother. But there's a harmony with her. So that's good. Now we're going, this is very interesting, Capricorn, because there are two outer planets that are uh, retrograding at the end of the month, both in Capricorn. Pluto is retrograding on the 24th and Saturn on the 29th. Both of these um, would probably be known in Vedic astrology as malefic planets. So <laughs> I'm not like a big expert on that, but I do believe I know which planets are considered malefics. And this is one of the reasons I am not a Vedic astrologer, because uh, as you know, if you speak Spanish, malo means bad and so that uh, phoneme relates to something bad. Well, I don't believe in bad and good. Um, Pluto and Saturn may not be playing. They may be very serious transits, but so what? Um, these are both, both affecting your first house of the self. Okay. So you may really feel Capricorn that you need to embark upon this major self-improvement kick. But actually, that's not even the whole story. And this has been an ongoing story, actually, for both of these plants. They've been here for a while. Pluto, 11 years. Saturn, for uh, a year and some. In the first house, I mean, this is the house of the body, so it could affect how you even look. I mean, with Pluto there, you may say, I have to change everything. And you may want to look completely different than you do. And it might be a health thing, even though, you know, the sixth house we think of for health. I mean, it might relate to uh, shaping your body in a certain way. I don't know. But really, um, I would say, and with Saturn, you know, having discipline to do so. But I really think this is more of an issue that relates to you being uh, being uh, you, you having to you being tested and being being um, reshaped, revamped, if you will, when we talk about Pluto, in a way that you may not felt you signed up for, but both of these plants are connected to karma and. You know, it's interesting speaking of karma because the south node is also in your sign. And it's like you can't fall back on certain ways of life anymore. And you, you know, ever since November when when um, the south node went into Capricorn, that's been the case. And obviously I'm speaking in a general sense in order to, to really find find out what, where everything is. You have to have a private reading, or if you know how to read your chart, then that's not an issue either. Um, because it does differ from individual to individual, but I'm, you know, I, I think a lot of you know that I'm just reminding you. Um, so 
having said that, Pluto retrograde in this first house, again, making you, shoving a mirror in your face, making you aware of how you come across to others. And you just can't hide that anymore. Um, hide behind certain, uh, what do they call them? defense mechanisms and things like that. And one off the top of my head would be the professional, the ever efficient person who tries to kind of hide behind their own um, competency, if you will, which kind of seems like a strange thing to accuse somebody of, because what's wrong with being competent? Well, the problem is that it gives the illusion that somebody has it all together. I always, you know, joke around and say that a woman who has Capricorn rising or even sometimes the sun in Capricorn, because I've known Capricorn women who had this, where I love the way that they dress, even if they dress very kind of um, streamlined, there's like this real, um, they look so put together, but there's also a cleanness to it. It's not like a busy kind of, uh, you know, fashion sense. And I just, I, I don't know, I've always kind of admired the way that Capricorn women dress and and there's but there's always that kind of professional angle to it too and uh and yet you can hide behind any image you can really um convince people that you have it all together and then in one area of your life you're like a hot mess so and and it's like it, it, i don't believe that we're here to like uh, fool people into thinking that we are a certain way um, but again, Capricorn rules the 10th house, which is not only career, but your reputation in the world. And so you kind of presenting a certain image may be important to you or so you think. And Pluto will tear your ass apart. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to use uh, profanity, but um, I, I mean... The point being that Pluto is about transformation. And in some cases, like I've said to people who have Pluto transiting their 10th house, they may have a fall from grace. In your case, there may be something that happens that, that you cannot maintain a facade anymore, that you are forced to be. And that could be kind of like a, not necessarily a fall from grace where it's so public, but something I can't. I can't like think of an example off the top of my head, but just trying to like, um, you know, get you to think this way because while Pluto's retrograde, this is like ripping off that mask even more so. And I'm, I'm asking you to be prepared because all you have to do is be authentic and you'll be fine. Okay. Capricorn, that's what I have for you. If you'd like a private reading, my website is rainamoonastrology.com. The link is below. Take care. Bye.